so let me see. Could you could you see my board now? So I'll clean. I'll clean it. Okay, so based on our discussion with uh, Pavel, I guess yesterday, I decided that I need to explain more about uh, linear sigma model and in particular the gauge piece of it. Okay, and uh, so for people who know it, let me make an announcement that I'll try to show why uh, Hori Waffe mirror is uh, incorrect at higher genera. Okay? You know that uh, in every talk, uh, there should be some technical things and also something quite interesting. So, so Waffe, Sorry, Hori Waff mirror is wrong at high genera. So it's mainstay then FG. Frank is also AIB is equally wrong, but is easily curable. Okay? So I'll explain something uh, that would lead uh, to this statement, okay? Let me give some more motivation why this is important. It is because gauge, gauge linear sigma model is a very natural generalization of uh, Edwards written uh, two dimensional Young Mills topological theory, as we discussed. And uh, Edward Witten's topological theory is uh, interesting if you go to high genera. But that's why it's proper to discuss uh, what happens uh, with the nonlinear sigma model at high genera. Would uh, mirror transformation on the level of conformal theory be a correct one, one would expect uh, that it works at all, for, for, at all genera. And we will see that there is uh, a drawback. And uh, basically, I think that this drawback uh, was missed for some reasons. And uh, and that's why when people say mirror symmetry, mostly they're wrong. Uh, they should say mirror symmetry genus zero or for a disk. You may say, how could it be? People studied uh, different uh, formulas for high genus. So from what you were, uh, from what I'll explain, you will see that uh, there is a uh, hole and uh, 
it's not quite easy to see how to fill this hole. I'll come to this later on. So uh, first, I'll explain something about gauged linear sigma model. And uh, at the end, uh, I will pose a problem. And uh, from, from inspecting this problem, you may prove that Hori Waffa mirror formula, just like AAB mirror formula, are, are valid only at genus zero. So they both are incorrect or wrong. Later, I'll explain how AAB could be cured. And uh, I actually don't know how Fori Wafa could cure their mirror. Okay? Now, let me explain something. Okay? I am not going to speak uh, in the great generality. For me, the best model would be gauged linear sigma model, Riemann surface, to what? To C n plus one over C star. Complex dimension of sigma is one. Last time I explained how this could be generalized, etc. But uh, while it's nice to generalize, it's interesting to inspect this issue. Okay, so I'm sorry, I see I have a phone call. Are you? Добрый утро. Да. 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 Окей, okay, I'm sorry. So it was a phone call from the robot from the bank. Okay? And uh, I, I could not miss it. Okay. So So let us see what is the GLSM way to construct such a map. We consider this set of equations. Where as a is a section in line bundle on sigma. A bar is a connection in such line bundle to 
Και σε χαλομόρφη θέση. Degree of the bundle is D. And I goes from zero to M. So here, of course, I need to make remarks. And remark is that when I have this thing, I have the global C star acting on sections by multiplication. SI goes to learn the SI for all SI for all I. Then if SI do not have common zeros, at point P that belongs to sigma. The, the ratio, say this ratio, is a section of a trivial bundle. So it is a function. So it could be evaluated at the point. So this is the construction. And these values are homogeneous, are coordinates of the image of point P. So this is the construction. When I start with this data, and I get a map. I have to check several things. First, such map. Has a degree D on second thing. All maps can be obtained that way. Well, before I'll explain this, let me talk a bit about what section is, because some people understand what section is. 
Some people do not understand what section is, or some, so people uh, have different understanding of the notion of section. Let me go a bit in the history, okay? So I want to explain, uh, so some people who know it would have to listen patiently. Some people who don't know it would, would learn something. Because here I wrote, uh, here I wrote, holomorphic section, maybe it's possible, maybe it's clear, but why do I take the ratio and uh, what do I mean that it's a function? Uh, I have to explain it. So unfortunately, now I have to do a bit of work in style uh, of uh, Gaga. Geometry analytic and geometry algebraic. Let me start with a very analytic thing that is known by physicists. So I don't want to lose physicists in this process, okay? So physicists used to think about sections in the following way. There is a manifold M covered by patches. So sections S I is okay. Section S is a set of uh, local functions S alpha to some vector space. is C for line bundles. Such that mm -hmm. S alpha is G alpha beta as beta on intersection of U alpha and U beta. Where G alpha beta is a map from U alpha to U beta into the group G, group of the bundle. So this is written in all textbooks on physics. So this is very de very clear definition. And from this definition, it is clear that if so I, I keep the question that if S one and S two are two sections of of what of the bundle v
Please ask questions. Uh, Andy, after the arrow, it's invisible, it's cut off. Ah, uh, here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. One second. Window wants to... Mm. Come on. Windows says that it would reload the, my computer in 40 minutes. Okay. It will be the break. So, Pasha, you escaped time policeman. Mm -hmm. It was a message from Windows. You cannot uh, skip it like a message from the bank. Another robot. Okay. Then... Uh, S1 over S2, alpha equals to S alpha, S beta 1, S beta 2, 4G equals sister. So it's definitely a function. Because it's some map, uh, that is uh, coinciding on the overlaps. It's a map. So it's it's not it's just you should be so not just you should be sister. Also, you should be one dimensional. Otherwise, it I, I, make sense. Said it. I said it. Ah, okay. C in our case. Ah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, that, that, okay, that's nice. But uh, people from algebraic geometry would say, come on. What an ugly definition. And uh, also, people from algebraic geometry would say, uh, we like uh, zeros and poles. So there is nothing wrong about zeros. But where can we can we see poles here, etc. So now let me explain how it started in algebraic geometry. People wanted to understand the following thing. Consider the polynomial of degree n on several variables. What is the geometrical meaning of this object? Since it's of degree n, one wants to say that this thing uh, somehow is related to CPN. But the question is in which sense it is related to CPN. It is clearly not a function because it's not invariant. Not invariant under this term. Then it would be a function. However, it is kind of equivariant, covariant, whatever. The action of the Euler vector field is M. So it is equivariant. And people wanted to say, ah, we want this, we want these kind of objects. Okay. 
we have such objects on projective spaces, but we would probably like to have similar objects, not only on the projective spaces, but on uh, Riemann surfaces, general manifolds, etc. So what kind of definition should we use? Okay. So first, let me explain how this is uh, related to the to the picture with pictures. In case of in case of CPM, we have patches who zero. Etc. UN, where patch UI is where ZI it is CPN minus ZI equal to zero. Of this space where the I equals to zero is a hyperplane in CN plus one. On uh, CPM, it is what people are, are calling divisor, but uh, it's enough to understand it this way. So, on UI, One has a uh, non homogeneous coordinates X. I write page downstairs. So here, so here I have pages. Now, what else do I have here? On UI, I can rearrange my polynomial in the following way. I can uh, I want I want to understand it as a function of this thing, the polynomial could be written as polynomial of x j i, and here I have this z. Zi to the power m. So this polynomial on the page <clears throat> is a function times something that is not a function. On CPM. Moreover, it's not even a function uh, on this. Not a function even on UI. It's a sum. So when such thing happens, we call 
We call this a free module. So it's a space of polynomials multiplying something. One such thing happens, we call it a module. Polynomials themselves form a ring. This is a module. Now, what happens when we go from one page to another page? There is a huge intersection. Actually, note that this UI is almost all CPM, and this UJ is all, also almost all CPM. So this intersection is, again, almost all CPM with something cut down, actually to divide it. We can compare these two presentations. So we can equally write the same polynomial as ZG, and here polynomial n. So this polynomial, so this is something invariant, and this has this subscript i, means in the chart ui, subscript j. So this is written in coordinates xj. Now this is the same polynomial. We may compare them. Since things are the same and they are equal to each other, we can write it in the following way. So they are equal to each other. This is not a function. This is not a function. However, the ratio of these is a function. So it's better if I divide both sides by z, j, n. So it is clear that here it is a function. Non-zero on ui intersect with uj. So it could be expressed in terms of x. Now on this intersection, xi and xj are two set, a set of two coordinates. So we see that one thing equals to another thing times this factor. And this factor is uh, a function because it is non zero and it is non zero function. So this is some function. C star value. And not only C star value, but very clear function. Okay. So that's how line bundles came from, I don't know, 18th century. It was a way to speak about polynomial. So this is a good, nice global object, but not a function. We see it only in this way. So these polynomials is considered the space of global holomorphic sections. However, we can have local section. What does it, so we call, so we call this thing global section. This is representation of the section. It is possible to write down local section. So local sections are PK of Z0 
Zm PL of the zero Zm. So as always, you see K and L means the degree of polynomial. It's something that we know pretty well. And now suppose that K is L plus N. So it's a generalization of this thing. Once again, it's something global. But being global, it has, uh, we don't know what it is, but it uh, goes to infinity where denominator goes to zero, right? So we understand that it has a pole. However, since it's not a function, it's not quite clear how to describe this pole. We only probably know the position of the place where this pole happens. Okay? So in this presentation, set of points. So it's so I give very rough definition, very approximate, but I, I hope it's intuitive. It's intuitively clear that in some sense, set of points where uh, this goes to zero, that is not co compensated by factors from numerator. It's called the divisor of poles. So, th so that's how people uh, describe the notion of divisor of poles. Set of points where this goes to zero is called divisor of zero. Actually, it's not a set of points, it's a manifold, and you can uh, say that it has multiplicity, but approximately this is this notion. You can go to a chart. So advantage of a chart is that charts have canonical sections, okay? So when you go to a chart, it's it's possible uh, to have a generating element. Note that here, that module of global sections is not free, okay? There is not, by, by the way, when I say not free, free over what? Of a space of global uh, uh, algebraic functions, but space of global algebraic functions is empty. No, it's not empty, it's only constant. So in this way, we are speaking about the sheet. It means that on each on each U, UI, you, you have a ring. You see, this polynomial ring, and these sections are module, free module, and sections restricted here are free module generated by it. So, so these things called meromorphic sections, meromorphic sections on each chart could be represented by the by something with this denominator. And uh, as the gluing, gluing functions here are just as for polymorphic section. So similar, so now I 
try to explain. Now I want to say that similar thing could be done on the on any algebraic manifold, in particular on uh, Riemann circle. So for people who prefer differential geometric point of view, it is clear that from algebraic description, we created a differential geometrical bundle with the group C star, with the gauge group C star. Moreover, physicists would say that uh, when I said, that on UI, I picked up the section Z I Z Z I to the M. It is not. It was not uh, the only choice. One may think, if there are other generators. By the way, in this particular case, all generators are, di uh, are different uh, only by constant because it's a, it's a maximal thing that generates. So the open space is too big. However, uh, would I consider smaller covering? I could have more uh, sections that generate all sections, all holomorphic sections. Or, Or even in this case, I could use something smooth. Good idea. I could say that I multiply this by a smooth function of X. smooth, non-vanishing function. Then holomorphic objects. Remember, I started with something that everybody likes, polynomial of degree n. So then holomorphic objects would be, would be what? Polynomial n of x divided by f of x. So this would be just a smooth function. Now, how can I guess that this thing, this smooth function, is actually the holomorphic section? That is a piece of this global section, yes? Something bright, nice, and invariant. In a very simple way, if I take this section, I multiply it by x. I would replace equation. So this thing is annihilated by the following equation, d over dz bar plus a bar. Here, I will say not even z bar. Let me put here x bar, where a bar is, of course, minus dx bar of log of f. I intentionally put here x and bar to, to explain that there is something smooth going on. 
So I am coming to this data. What is interesting is that such object could be defined everywhere as a differential operator. You see, it's because this is the bar operator that is invariant under uh, holomorphic and corresponding anti-holomorphic changes of coordinates. Remember, X were just this coordinate. And this D bar is something global. Similarly, this object is a global object. You see, in this way, we flow between differential geometric problems like this and algebraic problems like this. Okay. Now, this is absolutely clear and transparent on CPM. Actually, because there is no interesting uh, theory of modules here. So theory of modules over polynomials is quite simple. At least for CP1. It's, it's, it's extremely simple. For for more general case, you need to think about denominators. Uh, what could you put here? But for CP1, it's extremely simple. You just have polynomials, homogeneous polynomials of two variables. No surprises. Okay. However, interesting things start to happen when you come to. So I'm erasing this. When you come to Riemann surfaces, sigma of complex dimension one. Here we have to address two problems. Problem one. There are many non-equivalent a bars. So we can have different, interesting, we can have different Different homomorphic bundles for the same degree. So when I say degree, so we want to we want to know what degree is. So I would say, so, so how can I understand the notion of degree in a variant term? The origin of degree came, came from CP1. So uh, actually, as a degree, I would say degree is uh, the first chambers. Of the bundle that I called U1 bundle associated here. So this takes place 
in the second cohomology of sigma, and second cohomology of sigma is one dimensional. So it's definitely an, uh, inter in, an integer number. One may show that this uh, is a non negative integer. It turns out. But what is interesting is that there is something besides the degree, namely, Main statement, there are non-trivial holomorphic bundles of degree zero. So it's one thing. So there is a second thing. The second thing is once again, once again, how section of these bundles. are related to maps. One way map to CPM. So one map I described already, but one, but a person might be interested. What about the inverse map? Namely, suppose we already have a polymorphic map to CPF phi. Do we get this construction? So uh, I would like to address this problem from the point of view of differential geometry. No, that on CPM, we have a line bundle called O1. Of course, you know, so I explain why some bundles are called like this, like O1. Because this came from this homogeneous polynomial. O1 is a bundle whose holomorphic section, say that its holomorphic sections are linear. polynomials of Z capitals here. That's why notation is like this. So notation actually came from uh, algebraic geometry, of course. Great. So, so on CP1, on CPN, we have this O1 together with n plus one of its section, namely Z naught 
the n. These are clearly polynomials of degree one. So imagine that there is holomorphic map. Then from the differential geometrical uh, point of view, we know that there is a pullback band of bundle. Of a sigma. So, so how to get this pullback bundle? You are, in some sense, you are just pulling back the gluing function. So suppose I am a purely differential geometric guy that was studying elementary particle physics, okay? And for me, the bundle is a set of uh, charts together with the gluing functions, okay? So I just pull back these gluing functions. So functions could be pulled back. Moreover, the map commutes phi. So any map commutes with differential. And the, and the holomorphic map can use with the bar. It, so it means that uh, That I take these holomorphic sections, I pull them back, and I get the sections of the real neutral data. Okay? So I have this correspondence between holomorphic maps and the uh, real neutral pairs. up to an interesting case that is not here, where uh, holomorphic sections vanish at the same point. Once again, the notion of vanishing of section is invariant. Like for homogeneous polynomials, we can say that it vanishes on the line. Well, but we cannot say uh, what uh, is, what what value it has on the line? Okay. So now you understand why I, why I explained it this way. I wasn't able to explain. Uh, the opposite uh, arrow in the correspondence before I explain the meaning of the sections on the CPM. Sorry, Andre, may I ask a question? Sure. So in the brill nutter pairs, we usually have a bar, right? The connection. So here. Yeah. Sorry, I, I just missed. Here it corresponds to what? So we pull back the zero the z zeros to z ends, we get. So, 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 when, so when we put uh, things, so uh, holomorphic connection. So holomorphic connection goes through. Oh, okay. Because uh, when you take it, because when you take it this way, when you take it this way, you find you find definition of the bundle uh, in terms of holomorphic uh, 
sections defined somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have D, you have D bar here, you have D bar here, and you have polymorphic transition function. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe you will prefer to have smooth transition function. Okay, I see. In particular, uh, if you would like to have, uh, if you would like to put to make the C star bundle to U one bundle, mm -hmm. you would you would have to make uh, non holomorphic uh, transformation. Mm -hmm. We can play with it. It's it's kind of funny thing that explains uh, that uh, given uh, a bar. You can find uh, A such that the total connection has the gauge group U1, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, mm -hmm. and you may show that the first chain class equals in uh, second cohomology to zeros of the section in general position. Mm -hmm. Now about degrees. To show this, one need to play the game that I omitted here. This differential game, how to make you one, uh, how to make you one bundle, etc. Mm -hmm. How to write down first chain class, how to pick up such trivialization that this U1 bundle would go exactly around uh, the zero and the pole. Let me give you an idea. Idea is that you have this bundle made in terms of this gluing function uh, functions. And you try to trivialize it in some sense at places where holomorphic section is uh, non vanishing, you can trivialize everything. So you can move curvature to the zeros or poles of section. So it is kind of differential geometric game. Mm -hmm. Dog that hard. So you may find the unity curvature that is concentrated in the vicinity of the device of that bolt. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to go okay. into this thing here. So here I just, uh, I'll ask to believe me that uh, the first chain class could be go this way, could be, could, could be, could go this way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, then, of course, uh, you now maybe you see the degree, the notion of the degree that you have here. So for uh, so here we have O one bundle. So it also has the first chain class. So the first chain class of this bundle is, of course, uh, a hypersurface here. First chain class of O1 is equivalent to delta function on the divisor, say, zi equal to zero. So this is hyperplane. So when you have a map, the connection goes backwards. Curvature goes backwards. If you have here a connection that has curvature as a delta form around this hyperplane, when you take a pullback, 
you will get some curvature here. It is enough for me to write the following picture. CPN hyperplane Riemann surface. I'll do my best to write it. So this Riemann surface and hyperplane intersect in several points, and this is a degree. I'm sorry. Uh, windows want to okay I, I i can wait one hour i'm sorry you see i i have no control on windows company and i'm using windows so uh it gave me windows gave me one hour so let us make a five minutes break and that will have 55 minutes okay pasha do, do you have any kind of comments with my explanation uh, no i think everything is clear okay so mathematicians know it but uh donald is it clear what I explained. And was it useful? Sorry, yes, yes, I was muted. Sorry, I said it, uh, it makes things clear, much clearer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just five minutes break. Okay, uh -huh. okay. Uh -huh.
Ok. Ok, Donald, I am waiting for Pavel. So mm -hmm. today I have to be sharp uh, because uh, Windows, you, you, you cannot joke with the Microsoft company. Okay, so now I am coming to the issue of uh, of true of triviality versus non triviality of the bundles on Riemann surfaces. Okay, of holomorphic bundles on Riemann surfaces. Uh, however, I would like to connect this treatment. With the thing that are, that people are actually that people were interested in and are interested in, namely the holomorphic mass. Let me say in advance that uh, even forgetting uh, oh, no, if you ask. What people are actually studying in algebraic geometry, they will say that uh, they are studying the category of complex manifolds. Okay? Because it's the main notion in algebraic geometry. When uh, they say that, oh, we, we are studying this. Uh, something like, you know, ships, uh, categories, whatever. Uh, honestly, they want to understand what, algebra what uh, algebraic manifold is, because they want to understand what manifold is. And according to the modern point of view, to understand uh, what uh, a manifold is, you should uh, treat it as an object in the category of manifolds. So actually, what you are interested in, in algebraic geometry, is the category of uh, algebraic manifolds. Because this is a definition of what manifold is. Nowadays, uh, people are replacing it by something more refined like uh, category of A infinity categories, okay? But still, uh, it is uh, something like would-be replacement of the notion of uh, algebraic manifold. So uh, I'll explain what's going on uh, on the last century language, even the first half of the last century language, okay? And uh, a relation with the last half, okay, the 80s, 90s of last century and the beginning of this century actually is related to strings, okay? But uh, at the moment, I'd like to start with the gauge theory as far as it's possible. Okay, so after this preliminaries, let me say that uh, I not only explain a bit about uh, line bundles, and their section and connections, but also why, why do people need them? They need them to study holomorphic maps. And uh, 
And uh, this is the most important thing uh, to construct the category of algebraic manifold. Okay? So I will start with this approach. Bundles, that is kind of gauge theory, that, that is needed for holomorphic maps. And, and, and that may be replaced holomorphic maps at the end. Okay? But I explained what are the motivation. So, now consider the Riemann surface sigma. We assume that it's uh, such a body, such a body with a complex structure. We know the following. We know that there is so-called sheaf of functions. So there is no holomorphic function on the Riemann surface. However, if you make a function, you can have functions that have poles here. So how do we know it? Some of these functions could be obtained when you map this thing to CPN. So you assume to some CP and tilde, some other CPN. So you assume that uh, thing could be embedded into CPN such that complex structures is inherited from here and uh, on CPN tilde, there are many meromorphic functions. Like the, I don't know, R. Then the pullback of these functions would have poles somewhere. Okay, it may happen. Uh, that they would have pull at one point. It may happen so we, the, of course, everything depends on degree. So uh, geometrically, I want to say geometrically, you have a sort of uh, meromorphic functions on the surface, or if we cut out position of poles, we have a sort of uh, holomorphic function. Another sort of holomorphic functions is the following. You may try to solve the equation on sigma. So it's a differential geometric equation. It has no global solution, no non-constant global solution. And this could be shown by tools from differential geometry. However, if you cut out something, there are solutions. Locally. And we need to understand that locality should be taken in so-called, uh, it's called the risky way. Like on CPN, we just cut it out hyperplanes here we just take out points. So there is such a thing. Okay. So similarly, we can define bundles. We can or may Defined bundles. So we have a covering, and the old way to define bundles is to say that on the inter that there is a function, transition function, that goes to C star. 
we can define them this way. We can also define them as an inverse image of bundles by holomorphic embedding. So there is a lot of bundles. So what can we say about these bundles? So first thing about the bundles is to say they have a degree. So you can consider it general S as a meromorphic section. Just imagine, it has to be proven, but uh, you may trust me. At least intuitively, it's clear that bundles have meromorphic section. So here, there is a, this is a number of zeros of general section minus number of poles. When I say number, I mean that zeros are points. Poles are also points. And you need to compute them with multiplicity. Okay. So different, definitely, if something has non-zero degree, it's non-trivial bundle, it's clear. However, it turns out that they have a moduli. Continuous moduli. And there are several ways to show this. And these ways uh, somehow coincide with each other. Okay. But the first uh, thing is how to see how to see, how to get the idea that they have moduli from the algebraic point of view and from the point of view that relates sections to maps. So consider Riemann surface and the simplest line bundle. And let us try to see. Could it be that? So how to write it down? Okay, this way. So could it be that there is a uh, section of the line bundle of degree one and start to say look for a section that has zero at p and pole at q. So I said section, look for function. So such function would be a holomorphic section Of 
of the bundle. that have divisor of zeros p and divisor of poles q. For the case of CP1, it's easy. But we know that there are Riemann surfaces, you know, with these handles. Now, see, would we have such a section? Sorry, it would we have, Sorry, would we have such a function? If there is, then the Riemann surface is the CP1. Of course, that's the argument. If there is such a, such a function, then the Riemann surface is isomorphic to CP1 because it would be, it would be one to one map. So it's a CP1, but we know there are handles. I'm sorry, Don Gates, how physicists are thinking about it. So physicists, uh, physicists have a different point of view on mathematics. They use synthetic thinking. Namely, you use everything you have to study the problem. Mathematicians prefer to have uh, proofs that belong only to one type of mathematics, like purely algebraic or purely geometrical or purely something. Such proof that I gave, that you gave, that I had in mind, is this synthetic proof. We clearly see that there are handles. We clearly see it. We see that would there be such a function, it would be CP1 contradiction. By the way, great women was very good in synthetic proofs. She makes different things together, improving things. Like, uh, as you know, his favorite uh, theory of uniqueness of the harmonic function on a, man, on a one demand, on the two-dimensional manifold with boundary that continues the function of the boundary was proven to him by the mathematical physics method. He said, consider the real surface made out of metal. Put temperature on the boundary and look when heat uh, is fixed. So there is no more flow of heat. There is a heat equation that says the temperature uh, changes in time according to the pressure. So when the temperature stabilizes, it becomes harmonic function. And he said, re great women said, it is clear that if you do such an experiment, temperature stabilizes. Huh? So he was the first mathematical physicist, I think, because he used physics, namely the uh, temperature uh, flow, the heat flow in the metal to prove mathematical theory, but to prove it in one light. Of course, now we have uh, purely mathematical proof, but that proof uh, came uh, to Ripon. So here again. Okay. So, so then actually, what is an obstacle to have such a thing? 
And uh, actually, there is an obstacle. And uh, this obstacle is called Jacobia. Because uh, there was a theorem proved by, uh, I forgot who proved it, it's called Abel Jacobi theorem. That says the following. Suppose you have uh, a Riemann surface, and suppose you have some number of points P1, PK, that you call zeros, or actually divisor of zeros, and another set that you probably call poles or divisor of poles, and you call them Q1, QK. Then there is a condition when you actually have a monomorphic function with these zeros and these poles. So it is clear that this pair fails. Of course, the number of P's and Q's should be the same. So let me give you the condition. Condition is funny. You need to consider polymorphic differential. Omega. Not one, any differential. A goes from one to G, as people know right now. So it's the first thing that they study, that if you have G handles, there are G holomorphic differential. And compute such an integral. So this is a vector. CG. Then there is an important condition on for P's and Q's to be zeros and poles. Namely, CG should belong to the lattice of the period of omega A. Where these other integers And these seeds are cycles. So, first of all, what do I mean? So, in order to explain this, I first need to explain what does it mean here to integrate from P to Q. Omega A is one differential. Suppose here we have a surface. Here I have P J. Here I have Q J. I need to take take a path, but it's not the only path that I can take. I can also take this path. So this integral is not uniquely defined.
So difference between the integral of along gamma and gamma tilde is of course integral of a cycle. See. Okay. But that's why any reasonable answer that I can get from such formula is correctly defined only moduli the lattice generated by these guys. Okay. So, so what is stated here that this integral should be zero moduli this lattice. Now, now let us, you see, uh, when I was preparing to this lecture, I wanted to give it without the proof. But then uh, five minutes before the lecture, I thought I remember the proof. Maybe it's the wrong proof. In this case, I'm sorry. But, uh, you, uh, but I think that the easiest proof and not easiest, but the most transparent proof is here. So th th that's what I call. I am trying to give what's called a natural proof. Okay. Natural proof is a proof that appears where you actually have this picture at the very beginning. So. Suppose we have P and Q. So how could you naturally get this line? Or what, or what may force you to integrate over such line? Moreover, this line connects P and Q. So P is the pre-image of uh, Zero and Q is a pre image of pole. We may think where, where had we met a line connecting zero and pole? Pasha, where did we have a line connecting zero and pole? What would you say? Zero, yeah, zero, and then, sorry, zero, yes. Zero and infinity. Um, logarithm. Exactly. Uh, 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 that's okay. Exactly. We have it in, in logarithm. So. So how to get delta function on this line? I think that the proper way to get delta function on this line would be to do, to do what? To study this. So here, actually, OK, I, I went too fast. Here, we have coordinate y. I'm sorry, we had here called okay coordinate y. So this thing is del bar of log y. Yes. We get exactly this line. So on the target, it connects zero and infinity. Sorry, not plus infinity, I'm sorry. <laughs> zero and infinity. And this thing is exactly 
want the man should help the function. Because you have a jump, you differentiate, you get this. So what would happen if you assume that there is a holomorphic map? Then d bar log f should be delta function on some contour containing zero and infinity. Moreover, you understand that there could be several free images of zero and infinity. And this line would get different. Different three images, right? But what's important is that uh, for a function, this is exact. So if you multiply with any differential, it gives zero. So you have this condition. Isn't it nice? I don't know what is the standard proof, but uh, this proof I consider natural and kind of synthetic. Okay. I use geometry. I have lines here, I have lines here, I have a map. Okay. Then one has to one has to check that it is not only necessary but a sufficient condition. This I don't remember how to prove. But I like this proof because it's one line proof. One line, one formula. One country, one nation, one nation, you know, one floor. <laughs> okay, so this is Abel Jacobian map. So it means that uh, trivial bundles of degree one are in co-dimension. Trivial bundles on G of G are in uh, co-dimension. G in complex. And immediately we discovered this object called Jacobian. So if you if we map, if we do this construction and map to something non-trivial, it's non-trivial bundle. Now in the spirit of my course, <coughs> there is an alternative way to study this. You can go from holomorphic bundles 
two smooth bundles with what? With flat connection. Of degree zero. So this is called Narasim Khan Sesharji theorem. And this theorem is in the in the spirit of the cause that I am giving. Because it's exactly what happens when you compare uh, Holomorphic uh, coset and symplectic quotient. Holomorphic quotient versus symplectic quotient. It's because here you study holomorphic bundles over the complex gauge group. And here you are studying unitary gauge group. Say you are. While this F of A equals to zero is a moment map. So this Narasim Khan Seshardi theory is an infinite dimensional generalization of C n plus one over C star minus zero. Here, the interesting is minus zero. Here, we need to impose some, maybe you need to impose some stability condition. Maybe not, I forgot. You can, you can have here this thing, and here is This is the moment map. You impose moment map, you divide by compact. You are not imposing moment map, you divide by compass. And since uh, we, we already discussed this, it is uh, nice to discuss it again, to use it. So, uh, so uh, this is a synthetic way how people consider things in mathematical physics. Yes, don't. So, don't we have to impose stability condition on the left hand side? Yes, you see, I just, yes, we need to impose stability. Uh, sorry, Windows came. Ah, I can wait one hour. Yes, stability. I don't remember exactly this stability condition here, but uh, act actually I, I, I understand them. So they are in the orbit. So if I take these flat connections and they consider orbits, the, the, these, these would be stable, so. So, now I want to come to the same torus from here, because here we have, uh, of course, the map. Well, so what is flat connection? If you have flat connection, 
flat U1 connection. You have, of course, monodromy. So it's a map from cycles, actually from first homology, first homology to U1. So, uh, so U1 is, of course, C over Z. So you have uh, C over Z, sorry, R over Z. So you have uh, R to J over Z to J. So this is, of course, a total. So this is a real description of Jacobian. Once again, it has real uh, dimension 2G and complex dimension G. So somehow uh, I explain this issue of Jacobian from two sides. Okay? Now, with all this knowledge, I would like to spend the time that uh, Microsoft company gave to, gave to me to explain why Waffa, why Cori Waffa mirror is wrong. Um, so the, okay. the, see, see the question says the, the letters by which we are dividing on the complex side. So is it? Of rank to G. Z to two G, of course. No, here, course. here I see. No, not not here, but in the in the Abel Jacobi theorem, the, ah. the period where it is. Ah, ah, you may ask, could it be that it is non degenerate? Could it be that it is degenerate? Yes. No, it would not be degenerate because uh, because it's a period matrix that you have there. So then you may check that it is not degenerate. Okay. It's not the generation comes from the positivity of the Hermitian pairing between differentials and this complex conjugate. conjugate. You have some positivity there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I covered the subject. Now, Now let me do the following. Let me explain why, uh, you see, in order to keep audience, I need not only to say some interesting or non-trivial things, but also have time to prove them, right? Mm So I have some time to explain. By the way, the way in which I was explaining this could also teach some of you. The example of, uh, on, of how index theorem works, okay? So let us let's apply this knowledge to the dimension of the space of maps from sigma with so of this the part, this part is, is obscured. And ah yes. Okay, so so uh, I completed this part. Mm -hmm. 
for whatever reason. So consider the space of maps sigma g to CPM of degree D. And let us compute this number. Let us consider two ways of computing this number. Okay. Let me start with the index theorem. Okay. So index theorem says that That I'm trying to compute the index uh, for this differential operator acting well. So, uh, so the problem is this one. The the tangent problem is this one. I goes from one to n, right? So we need to know what delta xi is. This delta xi is a section of the pullback of the tangent bundle to CPN. Times functions, right? So that's it. So when I say that we are computing index, it means that we are computing index of the system. You see, here we have the bar. The bar takes this section and and moves it to omega zero one on sigma. Okay. So, so this is a debar operator here. We need to know two things. Actually, we need to know what this is. Okay. So why why t one zero not why why not the full t? Yeah. Yes. Because yes. this uh, because this is the condition on the holomorphic tangent bundle to target. Actually, if you would like to understand this thing, it is about yeah. so-called derivative. Derivative maps <coughs> tangent bundle to source to tangent bundle to target. Map is holomorphic if uh, zero one component are mapped to zero one component. And not to okay. one zero. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what's written here. Now let us uh, see what could we have. Huh? Well, 
we definitely have uh, we definitely have an index theory. So in index theory should have uh, several inputs. So uh, the answer would be. something like alpha times degree plus something like beta times genus. So it is G minus one. Okay. And, th and that could be also some constant. So answer uh, answer has to be defined through this thing. Our goal is to find C alpha beta. If we don't remember them from index theory. Okay. So what, so B times G minus one. So this G minus one is the integral of the curvature of a sigma. This comes of the integral of the classes that you have on CP1, of the first class. As we, as we discussed what degree is. It's called degree. And here I put uh, some unknown coefficient C alpha beta. So here will be D and here, here is G minus one. But so index theorem is supposed to compute either index or I mean, there's also kernel Yes. Uh, uh, so, so we will compute it in the case if we assume that co kernel is zero. So it's, it would be a virtual dimension. Mm -hmm. We may hope that we'll be lucky. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting since we have this index theorem. It's enough to study what. It's enough. To compute, uh, to compute, so we can compute these three numbers as functions of what? As function of a, yes. What else do we have? No other parameters, just m. So let us start. Suppose that B equals to zero. It means that we are studying map maps to the point. Okay. So what should we have? So from this we see that suppose G equals to zero. So these are fair maps to the point. We see that C minus B equals to N. Yes? It's dimensional CPM. Now let us take D equals to zero, still map to a point. G equals to one. This is an Euler number. Because we know that whenever we map circle, we are computing Euler number. So uh, all mathematicians know that, that when we map circle, we compute Euler number. And do you know why? 
It's because the homological circle is uh, is what is uh, C11. Don, do you know the circle is C11? Well, the, here we have even degree, and here we have odd degree. Because uh, homologically, the circle contains two homology, point and uh, odd one. Oh, yes, yes, I agree with so, that. So it is the fastest explanation uh, to see that when we are uh, put, uh, when we are mapping uh, this thing, we are getting other number. Because, uh, because of this odd thing. Okay, so it is kind of standard thing. I just wanted to, to tell you that uh, it's funny to observe this. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm claiming. We are mapping a torus, not a circle. Okay, it, it, it will be the same. Okay, so what, what's the claim? So we, so we the need to that, that is a given, given Euler number. So we need to find the tangent space to well a constant. Okay, map we, we, know, we know we know Euler number of CPM because we studied cohomology of CPM. Cohomology of CPM are the powers of uh, Stiefel Whitney form of Fubini uh, okay. powers of yes. Fubini studio. Yes, sure. So, so it should be L plus one. Okay. So it means that C is L plus one. Okay. Good. So we already know B and C. N plus one and B is what? B is one. Negative one. Oh, sorry, one, one, right. Okay, now what can we say about, about alpha? We already computed So we already computed uh, this dimension when we when we studied these holomorphic maps explicitly. So let us see for the case of. So we will register of g equals to zero. What do we have? Remember, we computed them. Mm -hmm. The dimension was n plus one times d plus one minus one, right? Yeah. So it is n plus one times D, yes, plus N.
Now let us check how this formula, so, so if this formula matches this formula, mm -hmm. I think it matches. What do you think? Yes, with alpha equal and n plus one, it, it works. So I am a bit surprised that G comes here like this. No, it really should work with, so with one here. So there is something that I'm missing here. So, so let, let me check it again. So it is n plus one d. Uh Minus one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I am a bit surprised here. So, so, so there is something. Uh, uh, so, I think that there is a computational mistake here. So, uh, uh, so there is something that I think I missed. So uh, let me see. You see, dimension somehow grows with G. However, it is clear that this has to go down. So that's why I'm a bit confused. Maybe not. So, so, so here the mention is N. Maybe not. So in particular, let us explicitly check the case n equals one. As we know, the holomorphic function is C, Z minus A1, Z minus AN, Z minus B1, Z minus BN, B2. So it is so so in this case it is n plus sorry so this gives two plus two d plus g minus one equals one 
plus two V plus G. Okay. Well, G, G is equal to zero here, right? In your formula. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, it matches. So it matches. Mm -hmm. We have two D numbers here and one number here. Okay. Good. So here. So here, so what I see is the, is the index formula. Mm -hmm. Now, now let us try to write down Mm -hmm. The similar formula for high gene of G with the knowledge that we have. So, let us consider the case for simplicity case n equals to one. So here, holomorphic functions So what can we say about holomorphic function? So these has to be sections of uh, so so instead of holomorphic functions, we should probably have sections of holomorphic bundles, right? So how can we write it? Of course, we have a constant. So I consider n equals one case. So here we have a constant. <coughs> now, Here should be a section that has this number of zeros, this number of poles. So here we have, once again, two D parameters. However, There should be relations between them. Between zero and uh, poles.
So here I would like to say that in the complex dimension, I would expect to, to, to have minus G. Okay, and then here now I start having problems. Okay, so what I wanted to explain to you is is this uh, high genus modification. So the number of maps goes down. Because positions of, of zeros and poles uh, are related. However, index says that uh, that's, that things would grow up. Hmm. So I see some mismatch here. So, so I am a bit puzzled about this mismatch. So maybe this mismatch could be, you see, Okay. So well, let me put it this way. Well, yeah, I know. So uh, I'm I'm looking at the at the formula that you wrote for the same object, but uh, in our discussion, um, uh, what what that was a day ago, and uh, there was a negative g there, and I think the the culprit yeah, yeah. the culprit here is probably um, well, there you did a different comp like argument with. Uh, Counting. Yes, I, 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 did, I did a different argument. Yes, so I okay. so I am puzzled. So I am Here's, puzzled because well, this the, the suspicious one was was with the order characteristic because uh, of the target. Because that's um, I don't know. Well, that's the only place. G, at least for g equals zero formula works. No, sure, sure. That's why I'm saying why I'm saying that the culprit is the only the only. Point on which we based our dependence on G, which was uh, uh, D equals zero, G equal one. So that's the suspicious one. So you, so you may, so you may suspect. Uh, so okay. So for G equals. So you may suspect uh, that uh, the coefficient in front of G minus one is what. Mm -hmm. 
So you may think that the, the number of holomorphic maps, at least uh, of genus one, ah, yes, I gave kind of hand waving argument, mm -hmm. saying that it would it would give n plus one. Yes. So that's the suspicious point. Maybe it's actually n minus one, and then every, everything would be cured. No, you see it. No, then it would give the opposite dependence on G. Yes, and also and also there is minus one that stands here. Okay, so. So you see, but somehow I explain the argument that I had. I'm not sure I quite understood it. So uh, can we just do case D equals zero, G equals one, N equals one? So how many of such yes. so how many of such objects are there? Yes. So so let us do it. Well, let us do it. D equals zero, yes? Yes. G equals one and n equals one. Mm -hmm. So in this case. In this case. This equation is solved by corset maps. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah. Yes, I found the mistake. Okay. It should not be an order number. Yes. Well, here it just looks like the dimension of the target and nothing else. So, so once again, so thank you, Pasha. Mm -hmm. I, I, I make two things. <laughs> so uh, once again, well, let me come back to the argument. So it was uh, before I, I, I put I put G factor. It was. Uh, n plus n plus one d plus something proportional to g, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I may I mix two things. So okay, mm -hmm. you, you you can guess the mistake that I made. Mm -hmm. You see. What are two numbers that I mixed? I mixed the dimension mm -hmm. with the number of points. When d equals to one, you compute Euler number, and Euler number is the number of points mm -hmm. that's equal to n plus one. So I put mm -hmm. n plus one instead of zero. So for g equals to one, and here are some coefficient beta. So for g equals to one, the, the, the dimension has to be zero. It's Euler number. It's a number. It means the space is zero dimension. Huh? It's a number. 
It's not a space, it's a number. Sure. So Euler number mm -hmm. is, uh, is, of course, the number of points. So Euler number is something uh, that uh, you can have only if you have a set of points. Mm -hmm. so that's why for g equals to one, we need, we need to have zero for d equals to zero. So beta is not, so beta is minus n. Now it's better. Ah. Mm -hmm. Because you have, in this case, you have constant maps, but it's only part of the dimension. You have also abstractions that are co kernel of this operator. Uh, uh. So proper. OK, you know, if uh, I can make a mistake and correct it, it proves that I understand the formula and, and not learn it by heart. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. It's a check if somebody understands what's going on. You one can make a mistake and correct. It's how to distinguish person from, from a robot. And also, Pasha, looking here, mm -hmm. you may easily check why here we have minus n. It's because for any g, you have n. It is dimension of the tangent space here. And you have g times n. It is the mention of uh, constraints. What yeah. differential with values there? So here we have minus n times g. So sorry, what did you say about uh, minus n times g? It's the dimension of what? Yeah, so for d equals zero, the answer is n one minus g. But it is clear. Mm -hmm. So n are constants here, yes. and n times minus g are one form here, mm -hmm. for kernel. Yes. OK, so this is the formula. So, so now, for m equals to one, it is okay. Mm -hmm. Funny mistake. To mistake dimensions, number of points with the dimension. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, it's a pity that, okay, that nobody corrected me at that moment. Good. Now we see that That in the chart, oh, Windows want to, okay. So Windows give me a bit more time. So actually, for general n, we have n functions. Okay, F8 that are constants, and here we have numerator and denominator. Yes, we have L neuromorphic functions. Okay.
So here we have CPM. Here we have M meromorphic functions. That are called X Z naught. That are Z one over Z naught, Z n over Z naught. You can see that the number of these functions are is exactly n. These are ratios of sections. So they are functions. The pullback of these functions is what you want. Each of these functions has zeros and poles. Okay. Related by the Abel Jacobi condition. Jacobi is in English, Jacobi in German, in his native language. So, So we have the following formula Z minus A1, Z minus, etc. Yes. So I'm writing this function. Here I put A. And this A goes from 1 to M. And here we have some constant CM, CA. So this is the n dimensional generalization. Okay, we made it. We reproduce this formula. Now, why this formula breaks for Iwafa mirror symmetry? And hygiene. It is because here, here there, there are this A, A and B. So would they be irrelated? We may consider would A, B, B related We may consider it as a guess. We may consider integral over the holomorphic maps as the integral of the guess of points. And uh, lift it to the action as a super potential.
However, here we have extra condition. Here we have an extra condition. And this somehow says that it is not just superpotential like this. There are extra conditions at high general. So you weigh, weigh n? The number of conditions depends on g, right? Mg, yes. Ah, Mg. Mg extra condition. And without this extra condition, we could understand this as a get of points and lift it to superpotential. So there are n plus one divisors. So zeros of these. And d is the number of them. But the tricky thing is that there are, there are these extra conditions. And then the question is, how do you impose these extra conditions? And uh, I will tell you in advance that uh, you need to modify the B model to impose it. But you have to modify it only in genus G. In general zero, you do not need to impose them, you do not need to modify. So people who check mirror symmetry in uh, general zero just would not see it. But you will start seeing it if you try to write down g equals to one formulas. Like the formulas of, of gluing uh, of handle gluing operator that Pasha, as you remember, we studied. Uh -huh. So there was a handle gluing operator that we studied on secret seminar, yes? But other people could go uh, and look at the literature. There is a handle gluing operation uh, in landau gilbrook theory. And people may consult it uh, in the nekrasov Fotashvili paper. Comparing these things, we should be able to see that things do not work. Okay, and uh, I hope that uh, we will write a short paper on this with the title that I gave at the beginning of this talk. What? So I actually like everybody to know this phenomena. To I I'm making an announcement that it uh, violates formulas for Hori Waffe mirror at genus one and higher, and higher genera. And uh, that's why it's good to attend this lecture. Ah, yes. Okay. You see, in this way, this result is protected enough. Good. So I like it, yes. So it is a natural logical uh, end of this talk. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So let me ask Dong. Dong, do you yes. see oh, where is the problem with the Hori Waffe mirror? Uh, yes. Uh, it's okay. So because Hori you don't Waffe have the free guess of points. Yeah. So, so it's not just 
for potential. Well, that was, that so would be something like, else. So it sounds to me like this. So they found this Hori Wafa mirror using the GLSM or they say using quasi maps. But if you raise the genus, then the moduli space of quasi maps does not match to the moduli space of stable maps of the quotient. It's not, it's not because of the quote, uh, it's because there is just a huge difference. There are different dimensions. Yes, it's so so the space. So the, the quasi map. Space, yeah, the moduli space deviates from each other. You take it. A non trivial Riemann surface. That's why, well, that's why just simple, uh, just simplest computation in high genus done using Landau Ginsburg theory would be wrong. Okay. And what's interesting is that, uh, okay, we. We were sloppy on it in the AIB paper, but uh, but other people missed it too. And we are going to write something on it very fast. Pasha, right? Um, sounds good. I also think it sounds good. But I always thought that the moduli space of quasi maps of whatever their genus is, is somehow related by the wall crossing uh, to the moduli space of stable maps of... Oh, no, no, of course. No, it's not, it's not the difference between quasi maps and maps is just is just that the space of quasi maps yes uh, <clears throat> is not the gas of points <clears throat> is not the gas of pre images of devices oh yes of course right right that's what you're trying to say okay it's, so, so so there so there are just relations between their position that you see only in high genus but you don't see mm. in zero in genus zero Okay, like about the copy maps. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. I see what you what you mean. Yeah, okay. And you can easily check it, and we and we will check it and write it down in in one week. But now I want to go from further because all this is about this gauge theory and maps, or nonlinear and linear. Okay. So it is my main my my main topic, but when you when you speak about bundles, you cannot ignore going to hygiene. You see, it's it's stupid. <laughs> so bundles are just just do not decouple. If you want to explain what the map is for hygiene. And try to to collect information. You need to put gauge theory back again. Still something. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me see how many people are still there. Huh? So is it? Okay. So we. So there are seven. Seven of us, and uh, I think seven of us. Yes. Okay. So, Andrei, uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I okay, need to so, so, catch so, some sleep. Okay, tomorrow, uh, and tomorrow uh, I'll discuss. Tomorrow it's time, finally.
to the scalp about the equivalent volumes, etc. Okay, sounds Thank good. You. Sounds very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By the Thank way, Tom, would we have a uh, uh, discussion this Friday? Uh, uh, well, I was planned to have you know, planned to have a seminar in this week, but I'm not sure. Uh, it's a family so, issue. So, uh, so, forgive okay, me. So, so at least, okay. So we may skip seminar this Friday again, if you wish. Okay. Yeah, it's, it seems yeah. like I have to take care of my parents, so uh, I'm a bit see, short. It, it actually, time. because actually because uh, uh, beyond this seminar. I will have uh, three talks mm -hmm. this Friday because I am oh, giving I a talk uh, in Russia together with mm -hmm. two other talks. So okay. with you, it will be four talks. So okay, then I will send the, send the email to Pavel Munyov about this cancellation. So how about resume next week then? Would it be very okay? good, very good, okay. very Thanks. good. Thank you. So okay. then, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. -bye.